Man, I love coffee cups. I love different coffee cups. If you ever want to send me something, coffee cups, I love them. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about how to squeeze the most out of your memory kits. So these guys right here, these are called memory kits. You guys probably know about that if you're watching my channel. And we're going to be talking about overclocking these, showing you guys how to overclock them. This is going to cover a lot of stuff in this video. And so I'm going to be leaving chapters down at the bottom of the video as well. So you guys can go ahead and skip around if you just want to skip my blah, blah, blah. But I do think that everything I talk about today is going to be very important. So I encourage you to watch the entire video. Now, there are a few things that we need to talk about before we actually get into the overclocking itself. And this is going to start with a disclaimer that you're going to find in a lot of these videos. And that's first off, this is overclocking. So by doing this, you are 100% likely voiding your warranty on not just your memory kit, but also your CPU and your motherboard. You can certainly 100%, if you don't do the right things, if you're not following the instructions properly, you can certainly damage hardware just as with any overclocking, if you're pushing your voltages way too far and overclocking will limit the lifespan of whatever you're overclocking as well. Honestly, to be heart to heart, to be completely blunt, you probably aren't going to damage your memory kits, your CPU, anything you're overclocking, as long as you're not jacking up your voltages way too high into places they shouldn't be going. For new overclockers, I do not recommend going over 1.4 volts. The second thing I wanna mention is that this guide is going to assume that you are somewhat comfortable with your BIOS and you kind of know around your particular motherboard's BIOS itself because you're likely not gonna have the same exact motherboard I have. And so our BIOS's layouts are gonna likely be different. So you need to know where these settings are when I talk about them throughout the video, and you'll need to know how to navigate through your BIOS. You will also want to know how to do something called clearing your CMOS because you're probably at least one time throughout this video, you're gonna have to clear CMOS when you know your system just doesn't boot because you pushed the frequency too far or you pulled the timings too tight. You know, Again, this is part of the process. It's not gonna damage your system, but again, know how to clear your CMOS. Additionally, for this video, I'm actually gonna be using this Team Group T-Force Delta RGB memory. It's a 3200 megahertz cast latency 16 kit. And then we're also gonna be using the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard and a Ryzen 5 3600. I want to drive home right now that depending on your system, depending on your parts, you may not be able to push your memory as far as someone else. There are tons and tons of factors when it comes down to how far you can push your memory, how far you can push your CPU, how far you can push your GPU. And so just keep that in mind as we go through this process. I might be able to get better timings than you can, but you might be able to get a higher frequency than I can. It just really depends on your actual kit. Again, a ton of different factors. And then finally, even if you have a system identical to mine and parts, say you have this exact same kit, the T-Force Delta RGB memory, say you have the B450 Tomahawk Max and the Ryzen 5 3600, this does not mean that my numbers will work for you. I did a tutorial on how to lower temperatures on Ryzen a, several months back, and I get asked all the time, can I use your numbers? Will they work for my CPU? And every CPU is different, every memory kit is different, and every motherboard is different. Every component is different. Whether they have the same name or not, they're different. So please do not copy my numbers. If you are not willing to do the heavy lifting, do not overclock. I don't want you guys to have major issues with your systems, and if you're not willing to put the heavy lifting in, it's just not worth getting the extra performance. Now with that out of the way, there are gonna be two major steps in overclocking your memory. The first is going to be pushing your clock speed or your frequency. And then the second one is gonna be tweaking your timings. And overall, you're likely going to be bouncing back and forth to find the perfect performance for your kit. It takes a lot of time to fine tune your kit, but hopefully after watching this video, you'll have a good idea how you should approach it. So the first thing we want to do is get into our BIOS. So go ahead and restart your PC. Start hitting the delete key. This will send you right into your BIOS. If you've already overclocked your CPU, write down information for that and then restore your BIOS to its default settings. We want to do this because if we have any instability when we're overclocking our memory, we want to know that it has to do with our memory and not our CPU overclock. So once you're in your BIOS and you've reset it to default, go ahead and enter to your advanced mode if your motherboard actually has one. On my MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, all I have to do is hit F7. Once you're in that advanced mode, go ahead and navigate to the OC tab or your overclocking settings. And then you're gonna wanna scroll down until you find something called XMP settings and enable that. Now scroll down to your SOC voltage and set that to 1.1 volts. By default, this will likely already be set to 1.1 volts, but I like to manually input it just to make sure it stays at 1.1 volts and the BIOS doesn't do anything weird once we start changing stuff. After you do that, go ahead and find your DRAM voltage and change it to 1.4 volts. I personally 
do not like to go over this 1.4 volts. You get a little bit more experience. 1.45 volts for DDR4 kits are pretty safe generally. I definitely wouldn't recommend going over 1.45 at all. And again, for me, I stay at 1.4 volts or lower. After you set these voltages, save your settings and hit restart, and then jump back into your BIOS by hitting the delete key while it's booting. Once back into your BIOS, head back to your OC tab, and now we're gonna wanna start tweaking our frequencies. The kit I'm using today is gonna be rated for 3200 megahertz at cast latency 16. So what we want to do is then take our DRAM frequency and our F clock frequency, and we're gonna bump them up by one notch at a time. So for my kit, it'll be at 3200, that's the XMP profile, and I'm gonna bump it up to 3266 megahertz on the DRAM frequency. And then for the F clock frequency, I'm gonna bump it up to 1633 megahertz. And it's very important, super critical, very, 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 very important that you're making sure the F clock frequency is always half of your DRAM frequency or the Ryzen platform. After you've changed your F clock frequency, after you've changed your DRAM frequency, go ahead and save and exit. This time, let it boot to your OS, mess around with some stuff, make sure everything's running fine and that it fully posts and you don't see any weird issues going on with your system. Once you verify that it looks fine, go ahead, restart your PC and then jump back into your BIOS and you're gonna wanna bump up your frequencies again and you're gonna wanna rinse and repeat until you have some sort of post issues or you hit 3,800 megahertz on your DRAM frequency, and that'll also equate to 1,900 megahertz on your F clock frequency. For the Ryzen platform, do not go over this 3,800 and 1,900 megahertz. You're gonna have latency issues if you decide you wanna do that. So now that you've pushed your kit until you've hit that wall and you can no longer push your frequency or you won't boot or whatever, you're gonna want to wind back your frequency by a notch or two. I can get to 3,400 on this kit, but I only run it at 3,266 because of the timing issues that we have. So the easiest way to tune your timings is to get three different programs and use those three programs to again, tune your timings. The three programs are gonna be Typhoon Burner to gather data on your kit, DRAM Calculator to estimate, and the keyword here is estimate, the best timings for your kit, and then lastly, it's gonna be Memtest 86, and that's going to ensure stability for your kit. I'll have links to all three of them down in the description box below so you can easily locate them and download them. Anyway, the first thing we are gonna to want to do is run Typhoon Burner. Then head to the top left, hit the read button, and then click either one to read the stats on your memory kit. From this list of stats, you're gonna need to find your rank and then your maker of your die, as well as your die type. For the team group kit that I have here today, we can see that it's single ranked, it's made by Hynix, and it's a C die. Now, what we wanna do is take that data and we wanna go ahead and open a DRAM calculator, and then we're gonna punch in that along with the rest of our system data. So for my example, I'm using a Ryzen 3600, so that's Zen 2 AM4. We then have Hynix C die, as I just mentioned, so we're gonna punch that in there. And then we also have single ranked memory. So we're gonna punch that in as well. We also have our frequency set to 3266 megahertz, so we're gonna wanna punch that in. And we're also using two DIMMs on a B450 motherboard. After we went ahead and we punched in all the system details, go ahead and click calculate safe towards the bottom of the program. And it's gonna pop out estimated timings as well as voltages for your setup. Now, it's important to note that these are estimated values and your kit may do better or worse than they recommend. So for most systems I've tested, I have found them to be pretty dead on accurate with the fast setting working most of the time. I'll go ahead and record all the timings that the DRAM calculator spit out at you or take a picture or something to make sure you have them. Then we're gonna wanna go ahead and jump back into our BIOS. Once we're there, we're gonna wanna find advanced DRAM settings and we're gonna wanna change our timings to match that of the DRAM calculator. Now people tend to do this step very differently and I personally will punch all of the timings in that were shown on the DRAM calculator and then see if it boots normally. And if it does, then I'll go straight into Memtest 86. I'll do my stability test in Memtest 86. And if it, you know, if everything passes with flying colors, then I'm good to go. I'll do some more stress tests like on 8064 and do some gaming. And once that all passes, I'll be good to go. But if I do have errors in Memtest 86, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go back into my BIOS, set all the timings back to auto, and then change four or five at a time while doing some stability and stress testing in between until I find errors so I know exactly which timings I need to loosen. How you approach this step is going to be up to you, but the overall idea is that you're gonna be punching the timings in and testing them to ensure they're stable. And if they're not, you're gonna loosen the timings that you need to until your system is fully stable. Now to do this, I use Memtest 86, as I've mentioned a couple times already in this video, and I feel it's the best program out there to do the testing. There are more out there to check your stability on your memory overclock, but again, I like Memtest 86. The first thing we need to do is make 
a memtest a6 image drive to do this we're gonna have to grab a empty flash drive with at least a half gig of capacity we're gonna go ahead and plug it into your pc and then you're gonna want to go ahead and run the image usb.exe file that's gonna be in the memtest 86 download folder and go ahead and select the flash drive at the top hit right and then there's gonna be two confirmation windows that pop up and you're just gonna click yes on both of them both of them basically ask are you sure you want to do this and you're gonna hit yes this is going to format your drive so make sure there's nothing on the drive and it should take roughly a minute or two to do the full format and writing of the image onto the drive once it's done make sure it's plugged into the back of your motherboard don't have it plugged into like a usb hub or anything like that just make sure it's plugged directly into the back of your motherboard restart your pc go ahead and enter your BIOS. You're then gonna wanna go ahead and find your boot override settings, locate the Memtest 86 boot drive you just made, and then go ahead and hit enter. This is gonna boot you right into the Memtest 86. And from my experience, it does take a little bit of time for Memtest 86 to load off of the flash drive. Once it does boot, it will often automatically start the test. But if it doesn't, you can go ahead and click configure and then hit start. Go ahead and run through. You can go do something else and you just wanna come back and check on it every so often to see if it has found any errors. If it finds an error this means the kit's not stable and you need to go ahead and just cancel the test loosen some timings or decrease your frequencies until you get it stable so once you're done stability testing it i like to run the stress test from 8 to 64 for a little bit it's free trial if you want to go ahead and download it and run the free trial for the memory stress test itself i like to run it on there for a little bit and i like to play some games or i go ahead and i re overclock my cpu and so a quick, very, very, very important note before I go ahead and conclude this video is that you do not want to sacrifice overall latency for higher frequency in most cases. You're going to have to bounce back between frequency and latency, and you want to find that sweet spot for your kit. So let me explain this a little bit further so you guys can kind of understand how you should pick out which frequency and which cast latency you should have. So say you have a 3200 megahertz cast latency 16 kit like I do right here. The overall latency for this kit is going to be 10 nanoseconds. This is calculated by taking your frequency, dividing it by two, converting it to gigahertz versus megahertz, and then dividing your cast latency by that number. This is like the simple explanation of how the calculation goes. There's calculators out there, and I'll leave one in the description box below, so you can easily just punch your, your, your values in, and it'll give you your latency. But overall, that's how you would calculate it if you wanted to. And so in this example, it would be basically 16 divided by 1.6 gigahertz, which is equal to 10. And the answer, like I mentioned before, is in nanoseconds. So this kit right here, overall latency is 10 nanoseconds. Now, say we went ahead and we pushed this kit further. You know, we want to overclock this thing and we pushed it to 3,600 megahertz, but our cast latency fell to 20 because at anything tighter than 20, this just wasn't stable. Our overall latency in that scenario is 11.11 nanoseconds. This is not what we want. We do not want to sacrifice latency for more bandwidth, which is what we just did for that overclock. There are going to be cases where bandwidth will benefit you. So a higher bandwidth will benefit you. But most scenarios, latency is going to be king. Anyway, I hope this video helped you guys out a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe for more content like this. Also, be sure to drop any questions you might have down in the comments below or go ahead and join our community discord, which is completely free and you can ask your questions there as well. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.